what I had. We were recording, and let's see. So you were telling us what you ate right after surgery? Uh, yogurt and soup and pretzels and crackers, um, Gatorade. Um, Did you get bored with that? Was that rough? or? Uh, it wasn't rough, but by the end of the second week, I was ready for something else. Good. Okay. But now, you're four months out, and that's not the end of where you're going to adapt, but would it be okay to ask what you had for dinner last night, for example? Well, um, I had a salad, mm -hmm. and um, I had some iced tea, and then we split an appetizer plate, and it had some... Um, spare ribs on it and some um, chicken and we barely ate any of it as a matter of fact the so waitress spare <laughs> ribs <laughs> chicken <laughs> salad <laughs> here's what sounds nice to me you know talk to a lap band patient or somebody you know this is just a great sounds like a great okay. meal it was fun yeah, yeah. good yeah, good enjoyed ourselves good okay good um, and uh, John does it go to say hi hi <laughs> your surgery was when on February 13th Oh, yeah, excuse me, May 13th. So May. Seven May weeks June. tomorrow. Seven weeks, okay, and? Down 34 pounds. Good. Good. And prior to the surgery, you had? I had a pretty good case of diabetes that I'd had for about eight years. And uh, I, with my fasting blood sugars with insulin and long-acting and short-acting and two oral meds, was running 140, 150. Right now they're running in the 90s with no meds since the day of surgery. Just give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> so two former diabetics, and uh, just, just uh, you know, I'm sure everybody knows this, but diabetes is one of the most deadly killers in the United States. Blindness, heart attack, stroke, kidney failure, amputation, all those things. And six weeks and four months afterwards, you're not diabetic anymore. Correct. My, my primary care physician does not necessarily believe in curing till he saw me um, two and a half months afterwards, and he said, or excuse me, two and a half weeks afterwards, and he says, What's that doctor's name again? <laughs> <laughs> more patients to send to him. <laughs> Wasn't that like in the Lone Ranger? Who were those? <laughs> Oh, well, that's wonderful. That is just great. Well, I really appreciate you, you know, be able talking about that on the video for us. Any other hints or uh, ideas you want to say before we say say goodbye and let some of the other patients come up and talk? Or um, well, I know that both of us having the surgery and going through the same things has really been helpful because what when I forget something like a supplement or something, he'll remind me and vice versa. And then we, we both can... remind each other to slow down yep. and eating. We, we both do. It's like, I think you're eating too fast. Small well, and let's, let's take well. that. That's a good tip. Mm -hmm. um, so what we find, our patients tell us, is they can eat anything they want, but they can get in trouble. And here's how they can get in trouble. Eat too fast. Right. Okay? And what we see is a lot of times when we eat these days, you get excited, hey, how was work today, or I saw a new movie, I'm reading a book, we're going on vacation to Hawaii, and, that, and you're just eating without yeah. thinking. Yeah. That will get you in trouble. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So our kind of tip is put down your fork in between bites, and then nobody gets hurt. You know, <laughs> put down your fork. There's a, like the, you know, the gangster movies, you know, put down the gun and nobody gets hurt. Put down your fork in between bites, and that will protect you from getting in trouble. All right, thank you. Applause, everyone.